Hi everyone, it's Samantha, aka Vegan Acne Sufferers, and today I have another video for you. I'm going to be doing a question and answer video with my followers. They always send me really great questions, and I get some of the questions a lot, and so I thought I'd share some of the more common questions that I get, and hopefully those answers will help you guys. Schnazzy Shiz asked, how do you repair damaged skin? So damaged skin usually results from overuse of a treated product or too frequently changing products, using overly harsh products, products that aren't intended for the facial skin, or maybe just a misunderstanding of what your skin actually needs. Sometimes it can even be caused by years of environmental stressors, things like the changing seasons, um, things like pollution, things like the water you use. And damaged skin can take on a couple of different forms. Um, for some people, damaged skin can spell overly oily skin. For some people, it could mean flaky, dry skin. For others, it could mean sensitive and itchy. As always, the first thing I recommend is to just be gentle with your products. I know that it can seem like a long journey from the problem skin to the remedy or the treatment being effective, but you need to be gentle with your skin. You need to be patient with it and give it time to heal. So really all you need to do is kind of foster the natural process of the skin as it already is. So that means using a gentle low pH cleanser, an oil-based cleanser before that if you need the extra moisture or if you need the extra makeup and sunscreen removal and then just letting it clean your skin and not do anything else than that at that stage in the process. Then you're going to want to use some type of a treated product, something that's going to help renew your skin. Um, that could be a retinol, niacinamide, linoleic acid or linolenic acid, ceramides, adenosine, and various peptides. If you look for products in lines that talk about barrier repair, for example, Dermalogica and Polish Choice both have a lot of great barrier repair products. Um, and also be sure that you are using your sunscreen, uh, especially for damaged skin, and don't go too harsh on the acne products. When you have damaged skin and acne, it can be tempting to want to tackle that acne aggressively. But if your skin is damaged, you, you have to make sure that you're healing up that before you're tackling the acne problem, which may actually help itself when the damaged skin problem gets fixed. PlayHardX asked, what's the best way to deal with dry and oily skin? So combination skin. Combination skin is actually one of the most common skin types, which usually means oily in the T-zone, like me, dry in the cheek area, like me, could mean acne, could mean a variety of things for you, but combination skin is very common. So some people just kind of want to use different products and I totally support that. I think it's a good idea if that's what's right for you. Using lighter products in the oily areas and heavier products in the drier areas. Um, for example, I will use benzoyl peroxide just on my mouth area and a little bit on my forehead. I'll use retinol only on my eye and forehead area and I'll go heavier on the moisturizer on my cheeks, for example. That's one way you could tackle it is using different products geared toward different things. However, if you have a budget or if you just wanna simplify your skincare routine as much as possible, then I would highly recommend combination skin types use a, a, a type of acid. So depending on your skin's needs, that could be a salicylic acid, it could be an AHA, it could be a combination of both. But acids really do the right formula, can really take care of um, those types of skin issues. They can balance the dry areas and moisturize them, and they can you know, balance the oily areas and not moisturize them quite as much. So I, I highly recommend AHA, BHA, either a combo or on their own for every skin type, but combination skin types especially. Healthful Nix asked, how do you balance hormones naturally and is it possible to cure acne? That's a great question. Balancing hormones naturally is tricky. You can try things like adaptogens, things like they're called like maca or vitex, which is a different types of adaptogens. Whether or not they're going to be effective, I don't know. The science really doesn't, isn't specific especially with things like acne. There is some evidence that adaptogens can help 
for certain hormonal symptoms. Whether or not acne is one of them, I can't say for sure, but some people love them and use them for their hormonal acne and don't have any issues. Just be careful to be mindful of any side effects and you know whether or not you should be taking certain substances. I think hormonal acne has so many kind of multifactorial things that go into it. It's not just like the sex hormones that we think of testosterone and estrogen and imbalance. It's so much more complex than that and it's stress hormones like cortisol and it's the, the diet that we eat and how that affects our hormones and it's the lifestyle and the, the exercise and the stresses we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis as that count as well towards our hormonal acne so we can't overlook those things and so a, a hormonal acne plan will really look different for everybody depending on the, the types of triggers that your hormonal acne has. So for me, for example, exercising really helps to keep my stress levels down, which helps keep my skin clear. Eating well helps um, you know, my insulin levels so that I'm not getting insulin spikes all over the place and creating inflammation for my skin. Making sure I'm getting enough sleep, and of course you can always try drinking things like spearmint tea and using things like DHT blockers that you might find in a like a green tea face product, a moisturizer or a serum. Those could help for people, again like myself, who are not only sensitive to hormonal changes in the body but also on the skin. And so anytime the testosterone or cortisol or insulin you know, changes, it shows on my skin because my skin is just naturally sensitive to those things. Whether or not there is a cure for acne, I think I can speak definitively and say that there is no cure for acne. Um, there are many, many, many successful treatments for acne, but the very essence of the word cure is to suggest that we can eradicate it. And there are just so many things, again, that go into having acne that a cure could potentially look so different for one person and another that I don't know that we'll ever cure acne. I think we will successfully treat it in the majority of people, but there always are extenuating circumstances. Bacteria evolve, etc. BK Babe asked, what do you use to improve skin texture that doesn't break you out? So this is a bit of a difficult question to answer from my perspective because anything that's going to improve your skin texture in a very measurable way, depending on what your issue with your skin texture is maybe your skin's just under hydrated but generally a skin texture issue like for me my forehead is due to acne scars sun damage that type of things um, wrinkling just aging and so anything that changes the texture of your skin is going to be involved in the cell renewal process and it's going to speed up that proliferation and anything that does that is inevitably going to cause some breakouts how big that breakout is will depend on your skin but for most people things like AHAs and BHAs, benzoyl peroxide, retinols, Accutane, those types of things all cause breakouts but they're immensely effective because they affect that process of how your skin cells shed and so anything that speeds that up or affects it is is going to inevitably cause a bit of a purging period but there's a difference between purging and breaking out so if you're concerned about the purging, I mean, you can't really get around it. In terms of finding a product that won't break you out, it's, again, it's gonna look different for everybody and that's kind of just the nature of the skincare game is you have to find the product that's right for you. I mean, I could list products for days and it may help one person, but it may be terrible for five other people, you know? So there are products I love and products I recommend you know, Drunk Elephant has a fantastic uh, Framboose Glycolic Serum for nighttime that helps change your skin texture. And while I say it won't cause breakouts, it will cause purging, but it may also cause breakouts for you as well. So, I mean, it really is just trying to understand the ingredients your skin does and doesn't like. M. Razzy asked, what is my personal favorite DIY mask? I haven't done a DIY mask in a little while and I used to do them a lot but I just don't have the, the time and energy to put into them so I prefer the, the pre-made masks now but my go-to favorite is always either a clay mask or a clay and turmeric mask and I always mix it with apple cider vinegar so that's like my acne fighting, oil stripping, poor uncongesting mask because the turmeric, you know, it's anti-inflammatory, it's great for the skin, like yeah, it leaves you a little yellow for a little while, but it brightens your complexion. 
um, and the clay kind of pulls the excess oil out and kind of just smooths your skin over. The apple cider vinegar helps balance the uh, pH of the mask so that your skin is in a, a perfect ideal environment. And my skin always feels like a million bucks after, so that's definitely my favorite DIY mask is uh, turmeric, a bentonite clay like Aztec Indian healing clay, and raw apple cider vinegar. Baby Paca, I think that's how it's said, <laughs> asked how do you control really oily skin and get rid of dark marks? As somebody with very oily skin, there are tricks and there are products and you've got to find the right one for you, but generally a cleanser, maybe like a tea tree oil cleanser can help just get rid of that oil right from the get-go, but some people find that's counterproductive for their skin and that their skin just gets oily throughout the day anyways. So again, things like AHAs and BHAs are great for reducing the amount of oil that your skin produces. If you have super oily skin, blotting papers are your best friend. I have some everywhere and I go through like three papers a day probably. One in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one again in the evening because my skin produces a lot of oil and I find that it's easier to just blot the oil away than it is to try and fight it with my products because the oil itself only causes a problem if it sits on my face. But there are a lot of great products, like I said, uh, like the Body Shop has a tea tree oil face wash that's great for oily skin. There are mattifying moisturizers, there are mattifying primers mattifying foundation you name it so i mean there are a bajillion products out there for oily skin now for getting rid of dark marks i have to recommend the aha bha combo again there's just nothing really better for your skin that does what those things do and it's affordable you know the the formulas out there are getting much better and so you're getting a really great product and you know that's it's a great way to reduce um, dark marks another option is rose hip seed oil i've had um, excellent luck with that and people with acne prone skin do tend to like it although there will be some people who won't okay we're gonna try and get through a few more here bear with me like poetry enchanted asks how to treat acne scars i've done a blog post on scars there's lots out there because there are so many different types of scars that there's really not one treatment that works for everything if we're talking something superficial like hyperpigmentation something like rosehip seed oil vitamin c products uh, retinols ahas all those things can work depending on what your other skin concerns are uh, when you start getting into the pitted scars and the box car and the rolling scars that are more indented um, you have to start looking at things like microneedling and lasers and fillings because it's a lot more complex than just discoloration. So it really depends on what your issue is. But we do have great blog posts on acne scars that you should definitely check out. Skew Skew asked, how do you get rid of tiny forehead bumps? Tiny forehead bumps for me are almost as bad as my hormonal acne because they are persistent and they're stubborn and sometimes you're like, I don't understand why I have them. I got them when I was younger and I got them again as an adult and I kind of figured out why I get them. Um, for most people, it's a cosmetic thing. It's the makeup that they're putting on their face or the hair products in their hair, their bangs, they're wearing sweatbands, hats, anything that's going to put pressure, friction, heat on that area, anything that's gonna trap oil, bacteria, and dead skin cells. It's gonna create these little bumps all over your forehead. So the number one thing is to look at the makeup you're using. That's usually the culprit. Anything you're putting on that area, you need to take a good hard look at. And then also to get rid of it is using an exfoliating product. I would recommend a chemical exfoliation. It'll get in there deeper and quicker. Things like, again, salicylic acid or glycolic acid, depending on your other skin issues, those things can get rid of those bumps really fast. Matt Matt asked, I'm coming off birth control and I don't want my acne to come back. What do I do? Coming off birth control can be an especially tricky time for you and your hormones as your body kind of adapts either to the, those blockers no longer being there or the extra exogenous hormones being pumped into your body no longer being there. It's an adjustment period. And that adjustment period will look different for everybody. It can mean a full scale breakout for one person and nothing for the next person and everything in between. <laughs> so it's hard to say. I mean, you could think, you know, you're doing everything right and still got a breakout. You could do everything right and not get a breakout. But again, following the same things for hormonal acne. So the adaptogenic herbs, the spearmint tea, uh, really amping up your skincare routine, making sure you're diligent about washing your face twice a day, using a treated acne product twice a day, 
even if you don't have acne at that time, it would still be beneficial to do while you're making that transition so that not only do you, you know, treat any acne, but you're preventing hopefully the acne from popping up. You could also potentially try slowly weaning off the pill, although this won't be an effective birth control method once you start doing this. The idea is that you slowly just get less and less of a dose. Whether or not this is going to be effective, again, I, I don't have much to rely on for evidence that it works, but it's something that some people have said helped with their skin. And so, you know, taking a, a pill and then taking half a pill or half a pill every other day, those types of things. So slowly weaning off of it so that your body doesn't have such like a shock to the system. Unfortunately, sometimes it's just a part of the healing process, the, the process of finding balance again. I know that's probably not the greatest answer, but it's sometimes true. There's not always anything we can do to prevent it. Sometimes there's a reason we have to go on birth control and things like that because our hormones just are dysfunctional. <laughs> they don't function the way they're supposed to or we're extra sensitive to them. And so that's why we go on these things is to help normalize that for a period. And when we get off, we're taking a gamble that you know, our bodies will find that balance this time and if they don't then we have to start looking for other things to treat that hormonal acne if we are going to rely on contraceptives and again that can even just mean something like a benzoyl peroxide or a salicylic acid product in your routine it will again look different for everybody wow i feel like i ripped through those and i hope that my message was clear and I hope that I didn't talk too fast for you and that I didn't rush through anything. I got a lot of questions so I tried to go through and pick just a couple because some people sent in a couple of questions. So I'm so sorry if I didn't get to your question or all of your questions. I just want to thank you guys for sending them to me and thank you for continuing to follow and support and I hope you enjoyed this video. So if you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.